Today, we will react to what football experts said about Mbappe joining Madrid. Semra, great to see you. You must be as excited as everyone else to see this deal uh, officially announced. My goodness me, Real Madrid have been waiting a long time for this one, but it's finally, finally official. It certainly is. Seven years is a very long time to wait. But if you're kidding, Mbappe, obviously it was a lot longer than that because if you see the photos of his child room, his childhood bedroom, it was just completely plastered over the walls with all sorts of photos of Galacticos and superstars from Real Madrid. So it has been a long time in the making. He did say that I'm not sure many people could understand the excitement. Well, I think he may be a bit wrong about that because there's so much excitement over here in Spain, so much so he practically broke the internet <laughs> within just moments of the announcement being made. The Real Madrid website crashed because everybody was trying to get on. Everyone was trying to read the official announcement. It was just two lines, but nonetheless, everybody wanted to see it finally be real. And within an hour on X, the, the tweet that was put out by Real Madrid has been seen by 35 million people. It has almost 700,000 likes. Kylian Mbappe, the tweet that he put out as well, it has something like half a million likes too. So, I mean, it's just incredible. This is one of the biggest transfer news probably ever in football history. It certainly is for Real Madrid. Listen, this is a transfer. Every Madrid fan knows that this will happen. So, in terms of excitement, it's a little bit subdued because we already know this will happen also because of the dramas that we have seen last few years being said that our website real madrid official website crashed like how often you see that because fans all over the world were so excited not just madrid fans even fans from other clubs because this is huge news for football even when mbappe posted about this like his post could i think as of now i just checked 24 million likes in Instagram. That's insane. One thing I'll say, even though there are some fans who are pessimistic, they think we don't need Mbappe, Mbappe needs us more than we need him, but they're missing a lot of questions that on the field and off the field, like Mbappe will increase our revenue much, much more than any other player in the world. Junior, Jude Bellingham, uh, Valverde, Camavinga, I mean, I could go on. And the manager, Carlo Ancelotti, who just is a serial winner. Real Madrid fans must think, well, that's the uh, 16th European Cup already wrapped up. That's La Liga wrapped up for next season as well. How good will this Real Madrid, uh, Real Madrid team be next season? I think we can sum it up in two words. Scary good. <laughs> I think they're going to be just absolutely phenomenal. They already are. That's the thing. This is the first time in quite a long time, or actually I should say this is the fifth time really in 112 years of history that Real Madrid for all of the trophies of silverware that they have won, that they've won a double, La Liga and the Champions League in the same season. Carlo Ancelotti now has done it twice with Real Madrid. And so it does kind of make you think, you look at the competition here domestically and your mind just immediately says, well, they're the clear favorites going into the next season in La Liga. They're certainly going to be one of the main favorites in the Champions League as well, being the reigning champions. So here's one point we have to be really cautious. Yes, joining Mbappe, getting Mbappe will increase our strength. That's 100%. There's no doubt on that. He will make this team even better. The team who has just won the Champions League and La Liga at the same time. So having Mbappe will definitely strengthen this squad. However, we have seen there are a lot of obstacles in the past. Just because you have the best squad, it doesn't mean you will win everything. So we have to be really cautious that, okay, this team will win everything now. We have to be really optimistic because anything can happen. There can be some bad times also. We also have to be prepared for that moment. Come in and we'll want to consider Real Madrid his team. He's no. very used to that. Why, why would he do that? Why you wouldn't do, you he? Do that? He's considered no, the best player in no, the world widely. That on the field. Right. You, you arrive in the... Let's, so I, let's not I, so act I think, like players I, yeah, don't have egos, no, 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 Come no. on now. When you arrived at Barcelona, yeah. you had big stars in the team. You were thinking in your head, no. I'm going to be the main man in no. this team. Is what came. I said to myself, I will show that yes. I can be. This is where I was going from. Nobody goes and say, hey, I'm the... No, you show that you can be. It's a different ball game. Why? You, t you want me to tell you why? Because you want nothing at that club when you arrive. This is why I like Thierry Henry. He's always on point, almost. Because coming to Real Madrid, yes, Mbappe is a big fish, right? He's probably the biggest player right now. If we don't consider, say, Messi and Ronaldo, because they are not at 
their prime. But given that, Mbappe knows that it doesn't matter how big he is. This club has one motto. You have to show on the field. It doesn't matter how big you are in social media. Those don't matter. Only thing that does matter, your performance on the field. And I'm very sure Mbappe also accept that. He knows that he won't have the same amount of freedom what he had at PSG. At PSG, he was technically a director, right? Maybe the owner, who knows? But he could do anything he want, right? But at Madrid, he's just any other player. Players here who are sitting in the bench, who are playing with him, has six titles. Many of them have six titles, six Champions League titles, and many of them have five Champions League titles and four Champions League titles. And many of them are sitting in the bench. And he knows that. Also, don't forget, who is our best signing ever in our history? Ronaldo. When he came to this club, he did not say, oh, I'm the, be I'm the best player by his word. He showed on the pitch, okay, this is why I'm the best player. Mbappe has to follow the same footstep. So Alex, what do we know? What's the feeling in Madrid? It's obviously been such a buoyant time right now, just days after a Champions League win, and now this. Well, yeah, the excitement around me might not be palpable, but bear in mind it is 11.30 on a Monday night and everyone's exhausted after those Champions League celebrations yesterday. As you say, it was a very long day of celebrations here on uh, on Sunday afternoon and evening. But yeah, it's I mean, it, it, it's huge and it's going to be absolutely huge. This so just here, I have to pause to say this. Just think about it. You won the Champions League and you announced you have signed the biggest player on this planet right now. It's insane pool this club has. Probably the only club in history we have seen so far. Well, he came on today. Jules, how are you going to fill your time now without <laughs> us asking you every single week? When is this going to happen? It's okay. I'm going to come to Madrid and stay at uh, <laughs> Alex's house. You know? Well, that's a valid question. That's the only job Jules had because of this news, right? Every time there's any rumor about Mbappe, he has to show up. Okay, this is what's happening. Okay, this is Mbappe news. Now, let's see what he does. No, make myself comfortable there. <laughs> just gonna get season ticket at the You're Bernabeu welcome, Jules. And just, Always. Thank you, my friend. Buy all the shirts and become a proper Real Madrid fan. You know, that's what we do. The last statement is kind of a lie. I don't think he'll become a proper Real Madrid fan ever. Because if you look at his reaction about Madrid winning, I don't feel that that he would be a Madrid fan. He always tries to find some fault in Madrid. Stuff. But Jules, what's the reaction been then to this? It's finally done. It's, I mean, it's a little bit hard to believe, right? It's just f because we've spoken about it for so long. I mean, not just this, this, this move now, but two years ago, even last summer, three summers ago, four summers ago, since pretty much I've started being on ESPN and Killian has been making his breakthrough into professional football and being that good, we've been talking about him. So to finally see him happening, and even, I, I really believe some Someone from his camp was saying today, like, even he, he, he knows it's obviously happening, but even he, he was so excited and just, it's finally there, that dream that he's had since he was a kid. Because yeah, PSG, of course, is his hometown, but Real Madrid is different. This is the team that really loved when he was a kid because of Zidane, because of Cristiano, because of the Bernabeu, because of the history of this club and how, because he's the greatest club in the world, really, and the biggest club in the world. So now, finally, it's official, it's there. I think even two years ago when he had that U-turn and, and Real Madrid felt a bit betrayed and rightly so, I think he knew that it would happen eventually at some point anyway. So now he's there, he's real. He will focus on, on France. Like Alex said, on the Euros, it's very important for him. He's the captain as well. This is his first competition as, as a national team captain. So it's very, very important. So I have to tackle this. Many Madrid says, were so angry right? a few years ago when he backtracked. There was a huge rumor that he will join Madrid. And he backed right, right? But in hindsight, actually it's more meaningful than you think to be. For example, when your president, your country president, talks to you to be in this club, and they kind of force you, and there are a lot of political reasons, right? And a young player like Mbappe has to make decision when he thinks that your president is talking to you. That's huge, right? So there are a lot of factors why he did not join Madrid at that time. Although it would be better for his career if he would join at that time, because that means that he could win two Champions Leagues so far if he would join at that time. However, he's still 24 years. He has a long time to go. This is his real prime. 
he will still have eight years of his prime, at least. Luis, the champions of Europe just got even stronger. What are you saying? That uh, should, we should be worried the ones that we don't follow that much uh, Real Madrid for next year? Yes, I think everybody should be with big concerns because uh, the team that normally wins for fun, they, they, they just don't know in La Liga, they just don't know in Champions League showing their mentality, their strength uh, in in the way that they play and they manage uh, the situation of the, of the game. Next year, they're going to be even stronger. It's true. And it's a concern. I'm sure that Real Madrid is looking for someone else in the middle of the park because Cruz just mentioned he was uh, retiring. So a very important piece is missing in that center of the park. But I'm sure that Ancelotti will find a way of bringing another player and uh, perform in the better way as we've seen during the whole season. Even with the injuries, even with the, all the problems, now they look stronger because uh, if something uh, is going to show Mbappé is a way he can break any kind of defense. He's a player that in the best moments is unstoppable. He can beat any single player on speed, on ability. He's so skillful. So he needs to adapt quickly to what it is and what it means to play for Real Madrid, what it means that jersey. But I'm sure that uh, he's going to do it quick. Everyone is expecting him to deliver it straight away. And for Real Madrid, it's all about uh, good news. And as soon as possible, bring uh, Mbappé to start playing for you know why I'm so excited for our next season? Is that Mbappe and Vinny playing on the same team. That's, that will be incredible. I don't know how defenders will respond to that. Like two of the fastest and two of the best dribblers playing for the same team. And I don't know. Because right now, when Vinny plays, right? Because he's so good at dribbling. Opposition manager can put two or three players. And you have Mbappe. How do you deal with that? So now you'll put multiple players on these two players? Then what will happen to Rodrigo or Bellingham? So now we have more potential to attack, to create chance and to score goals. Also, Luis Garcia rightly pointed out that not having Cruz is a missing puzzle for Madrid because Madrid's play style right now is dependent on Cruz. So given Cruz retired from football or club football right now, which means Real Madrid has to change their player style, that's one point. Another point could be have another player who will have kind of similar role. I mean, as of now, I can see Modric can play the same role, but again, he's also getting older, which also means that we have to find some youngster to take the role. I think Kama can do that kind of role, but the problem with Kama is that he's not consistent with that. For example, one of the best performance by Kama and almost playing the same kind of role like anchoring the gameplay was I have seen against Man City in second leg at our home when we had the best comeback in Champions League history ever when Rodrigo scored two back-to-back -back goals. Do you remember that? In that game, one of the key components was Kamas' gameplay. Like he was doing all the long passes. I mean, look at the first goal of that match. Like Kamau had a long pass to Benzema and we had a pass to Rodrigo. So those kind of Movement shows that Kama has the potential. The only difference is that he doesn't have enough experience and he doesn't do that consistently. And there's another player who can do similar kind of things, but you might not know. This is a surprise for you. Fede Valverde. I think Fede can play a little deeper role, even though that will affect his best player style. Like he's the player who likes to run with the ball, but I think he can do those long passes also. I have seen a few matches of Fede Valverde playing same exact Cruz kind of role for Uruguay and he was doing corners. I was so shocked, like he was so accurate in those corners. I would argue that some of the corners he was taking in that match in Uruguay, I was literally surprised. I'm like, wow, Fede is so good. So maybe he has the talent. We just have to show that he can do it now. What's Carlo Ancelotti's message to him? Because this is a star, superstar player walking into mm. a very tight team and a team that are already champions, double champions this season. I think the only message that Ancelotti has to make clear to Mbappe is, is that he's walking into a team. And the success that we've had, yes, we have individuals who, who can win games for us, but the reason we have won not only the Champions League but our domestic league is because we are a team, we are a unit. We're not about individuals, we're about us to, as a together. That's the only thing. Because as far as the game's concerned, the guy's frightening. On his day, 
I don't care who you are, you can't stop them. So it's nothing to do with football, it's to do with what goes on between his ears. And if he can turn this guy into a huge big time team player, then there'll be no stopping Real Madrid. Because by all when you have so much talented player, right, Mbappé, probably Carlo Ancelotti is the best coach because he's the best man manager, according to people, right? He's the one who knows how to deal with so many egos, how to deal with so many talented players because he had multiple career roles in the same position in multiple clubs. So he knows how to deal with those. So that's not a problem at all. Also, Mbappé is a player, as Stevie said, who can literally change the tempo of the game by himself like he can do something totally unthinkable for most other players some of the things he can do you don't see by many other players like his near shot goal i haven't seen any better player scoring near shot goal like mbappe and his acceleration oh my god it could be one of the best in football history like he's as good as r9 when it comes to acceleration Look, Hans Schacker, the guys at Real Madrid already, obviously they're not going to say any different, but they do seem to be very excited about welcoming Kylian Mbappe. And, and, and who wouldn't be? Kylian Mbappe is arguably the best player in world football, joining arguably the best team in, in, in world football. And, and who wouldn't welcome that? And, and, and the biggest club in world football. And, and, and I say that because I felt, and, and while you understand Kylian's thinking of two years ago or with the U-turn that, that Jules just mentioned, wanted to stay in Paris, he's a Paris boy, I, I just felt that this was the club that Kylian needed. And while France moved heaven and earth, and I say France moved heaven and earth, to keep Kylian Mbappe in French football, with good reason, um, I feel that he needed to move on from that. And now, despite what it may be costing Real Madrid certainly in terms of wages and in terms of how much more he's making than everybody else, the club remains the most important thing at Real Madrid. Great players, Galacticos come and go, but Real Madrid somehow manages to, to maintain this mystique, this, this aura about them, that I think will do Kylian Mbappe the absolute world of good. And all so let's touch a little bit about the wage issue. Okay, first of all, we already got rid of a lot of big wage in our club. Like Eden Hazard, we removed him last year. Benzema left last year. That's also a huge salary. And this year, Cruz retired. So we're <laughs> all the top earners are leaving one by one. So wage is not an issue for Madrid, given the financial situation they are having right now. So, Jules, how do they line up? We've put you to task here to give us a starting eleven with Kylian Mbappe in it at Real Madrid. Yeah, and we will start with the, the, the simplest one in a way, which is to keep the same formation, the 4-4-2 with the diamond midfield that they've used for most of this season, with Bellingham at the top of the diamond as a number 10. And the two forwards this season have been Vinicius and Rodrigo. You take out Rodrigo. I know it's sad for him. And I don't like the first formation, even though that's a possible formation. Only reason why I don't like, as of now, whenever Kama and Chouamani play together, we never had the best attack, best chance creation. So I don't know, just because it did not happen in the past, that will also matter in the future. But I just feel having both together kind of spoils our midfield attack. Maybe just have Kama or Chouamani just one of them at CDM position and then have Modric on the left. That could be one position. However, I also don't like that we're not having Rodrigo, but let's see. You put Kylian in there. The rest stay the same. You've got your three midfielders behind Bellingham, Vinicius and Kylian in Valverde, Camavinga and Chouameni, for example, and then your back four and Courtois in goal. This is probably the easiest way for Carlo to just bring in Mbappe, not changing too much. Another point I didn't like here, having Alaba over Milita. First of all, when Alaba was playing before he got injured, we're considering so many. Like every time Alaba plays, like this season, I mean, when we won La Liga and Champions League, we're considering like back and forth. We're considering like every goal in 15 minutes or something like that. Once he got injured, I'm not saying that's the reason our defense got much better, right? Personally, I don't see Alaba in the first 11. For me, our best center back has to be Militao and Rudiger. Given Militao is back to his 100%. Okay, it's harsh for Rodrigo because he's had a good season, but that's the way things that's the way things happen in football. The other one that you could think of 
is you know maybe a more attacking formation let's say let's move to a 4-3-3 for example where you have a front three of Vinicius, Rodrigo and Mbappe in the middle then you drop a little bit deeper for Bellingham who can play in a free role if you Okay, I like this better. Again, this is a possible option, right? When you have so many talented players, so many squad depth, you can choose different formation for different purposes. Yeah, you have so many matches to play. Even next season, we'll have more matches for Champions League. So having more squad depth is important. Which is the scarier lineup, do you think, Luis? <laughs> the scary, of course, is the second one when you got all the firepower up front. But, uh, I'm not going to be defending there. I mean, I'm sure that the, the concerns are who's going to be defending. So, I many Valverde, of course, they are fantastic players, or even Camavinga. They can do the work in the middle of the park, but you need a little bit of balance. And if you're going to use and Bellingham plus three strikers, even though the Rodrigo does a little bit of work for Real Madrid, it's just uh, too aggressive. I'm, I I agree with Jules that they, in some games you can use that when you know that you're going to be dominant, that the team is going to sit at the back, but definitely it's a really, really attacking team. And you... I think we're forgetting one key player who is also joining Madrid next season. I mean, this season technically, right? Hendrik. What will happen to Hendrik? There's a player to watch for me. Like for me, of course, Mbappe will definitely play. There's no confusion about that. But I'm so excited also for Hendrik. I would like to see what roles he play and how Carlo manage the whole squad. We have also Arda. So how we tackle all the players. I also would like to see if Hendrik can play not just number nine, but also say in the right side at right wing because he's lefty. Suppose that's a bit of a difference with Mbappe and his idol Cristiano Ronaldo and Cristiano Ronaldo coming in when the Champions League hadn't been won for a very long time. Where Kylian Mbappe is coming into a winning side and a winning unit right now, Ale. And, and let's not forget the environment that he's coming from in PSG in which basically he called the shots. It was Kylian Mbappe and then everybody else. He was giving the keys to the kingdom and said, Kylian, you do as you wish, right? That's the environment he's coming from. And he's going into an environment in which nobody, nobody, and Maka would know this better than anybody else, nobody is bigger than Real Madrid. No player is bigger than Real Madrid. That Real Madrid is it. It's above all else and above all players. That's the thing and that's the message that he has to be able to get in his head and in his heart and in his soul. That it doesn't matter how big of a player he becomes, he's not bigger than Real Madrid. And if you're not bigger than Real Madrid, you have to sort out where do you fit in? Where do you find the best version of yourself while still being a part of a group that is successful? And that's to your point and to your question, Kay. In the end, this is going to be measured by success. And success at Real Madrid means winning Champions League, means winning the league, means being the best team in the world. And if that's not the case, then obviously all eyes will turn back to Kylian Mbappé because guess what? We were good before you were here. Now you're here and now we're not good. So what's different? You're different. That's going to be a problem. I don't know why you spin brought out this unnecessary discussion. It's not needed. Like they're thinking Mbappe will ruin Real Madrid's dressing room. He's bigger than Madrid. No, absolutely not. This club is bigger than any other player. Like Ronaldo, or the best player in football history, right? We won so many Champions League titles with him. Whenever he asks for a higher wage, higher salary compared to Say Messi, he wanted Messi's salary in Madrid. What we did? Okay, time to go home. Time to go to Juventus. And we got 100 millions for him. Because in this club, no one is bigger. Anyway, another important thing. When Mbappe posted about this story that he's joining Madrid, he said, A dream come true. So happy and proud to join club of my dream. Nobody can understand how excited I am right now. Can't wait to see you. Madrid says, Thank you for unbelievable support. Hala Madrid. And here's the crazy things. When he posted this, he got 24 million likes as of now. And most importantly, who commented on that post? The only one, CR7. He said, my turn too. I think he put a football emoji. Excited to see you. That comment got 5 million likes. I don't know if it could be one of the most liked comment or not, but that's super crazy. Because when it comes to Madrid, you don't see much year seven talking about Madrid. But we won so many Champions League, right? Two Champions League since his departure. I did not see any single post of year seven. Congratulations, Madrid. Our other players did, like Bale did, like other ex-players did who left our club, right? He never did.
I don't know why. Maybe he's still a little bit mad what happened. But the fact that here he congratulated and he's happy for Madrid and he said, Hello, Madrid. I'm kind of happy. Anyway, let me know how excited you are because of Mbappe. What's your expectation from next season? Like, what do you want us to be? To be Champions League winner, La Liga winner? What's your expectation overall?